Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Under the Radar, episode, I want to say 2-5, am I correct? I think. Yes. Yes, let's, let's say yes. We did yes, episode 2-5. Uh, this is going to be our first super special episode of the new season, and I say that because we have a very special guest with us here today. Please introduce yourself, special guest. Hello, I am a special guest. You might know me. I do Liberator things. I've convinced people that I know how to fly it, and I find that hilarious. I am Wyclef Slim, YouTube, Reddit, whatever. So yeah, thanks for having me on. Thank you for joining us. I've been I've been wanting to have Slim on here for the longest time just because he was an he was an adversary for a long time when I was in Nuck and we kind of went you know the Zaps Air Squad versus the Nuck Air Squad. So I remember fighting him then. Wait, you were and in Zaps? No, I was not was... in Zaps. Oh, okay, I was gonna say we're but not he, friends. He was part. He was part of the. the uh, I occasionally flew with him after yeah. Nuck, you know. Yeah, okay. And Back occasionally I hunted them down solo, which was a terrible, terrible mistake. <laughs> But it was fun. We had fun. Remember, this is fun. Yeah. Zaps. It's like Nemo Zaps. on the pier. Nuck turns around. Mine. 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 Buckleth has no idea what this joke means, but it's okay because our viewers <laughs> do. All right. So before we get too off topic at the very start of the podcast, which has never happened before. Ever. 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 Hey guys, I have a really like I, I really gotta poop. <laughs> Go poop. <laughs> Remember last time you went off to poop? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. I said before we get too off topic. Okay. <laughs> I may or may not have been I'm not working. I'm not, this isn't working. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I'll start us off with a probably pretty minor topic, but we'll see how we do this. Um. The current state of the game of Planetside, at least it's related to that. Um, the whole removal of the passive certs for free to play, and I think I th it's just for free to play, right? Like if you still are a member, you still get the certs, correct? Yes. Yeah, correct. Right. correct. Yeah. So there was a lot of uproar about that. I actually I didn't really read too much into it. I just realized, oh hey, no more free passive certs for free to play. And I saw a comment by Radar X that got like negative fifty downvotes. So I was like, holy shit, people must be pissed. So I figured we'd start off on that and see what people are thinking. Um, I'll I'll start off by saying like, I I don't know whether it's a huge deal or not or. At least personally, I can see why it is to other people, but for me, it's not a big deal now, or not really ever before. Um, the argument I was going to kind of make was the fact that way back when, um, I actually made three, four different accounts um, that weren't weren't my main account, and I would just use the passive certs I got from that to kind of build up my plane without having to fly it around in its stock form and actually make it useful and um actually my connery plane my connery uh, account before i before i ever even actually flew the plane i upgraded the hover airframe the nano auto repair and the fire suppression and the rotary magazine size and ammo capacity 100 percent before i ever even pulled the plane and it was shit. just just through passive search so i mean yeah, I, th there's my argument for their usefulness, you know. So, I don't know. How, what, do you, what do you guys feel about them removing it? Okay. Um, it sort of reminds me of the Upgrade Now thing, which was uh, about a half a year ago. I'm sure most people remember. But they gave really boisterous increased ads to um, non-members. And members then, in turn, wouldn't get the ads. And the ads would be to get a membership. And it irritated uh, the ad still irritates me because i spent probably over a hundred dollars on planet side without actually buying a membership and um you know there are other ways i've i've clearly supported the game out of my wallet you know i've i paid more for it than i would have for a triple a game and yet i'm still being targeted with increased advertisements to put more money into the game it, it's like sort of a middle finger that even though i'm supporting the game I'm going to be targeted with ads to support the game even harder. And at that point, um, I chose to stop supporting Planetside 2 altogether. I haven't purchased any station cash since then. 
since the Upgrade Now thing. And this is honestly just more of that. Um, you can be a Planetside supporter without being a member. It just makes it harder now to gain cert income and forces you to blow more money on the game. It makes it sort of more constricted for free-to-play players to get certs, which I don't like. So I'm going to continue not giving SOE money is my reaction to this. Um, I'm indifferent to it, honestly. Like I've been a member, and I thought being a member and only getting 48 certs per 24 hours for logging in wasn't really enough for, you know, you having a subscription every month. It should be something around 100 so you can, you know, acquire certs quickly and build up alt accounts if you want because you're a paying customer and maybe free-to-play customers should actually, well, they're not customers, are they? Because they're not buying anything, but should get more certs anyways for logging in, like something like 24 so they can build up their passive things because being new to this game, sometimes it's very frustrating learning how to grind certs even in a support role because you're not getting to the, the good fights right off the bat until you're like six hours into the game and you've died a thousand times. Yeah, I'd have to say I'm kind of passive. Um, I have a membership too, so that, that's that been really helpful. I kind of did what Hater did on a couple of my ops and I just chilled on him for like a month logging in every day until... I could get things built out so that all of my vehicles weren't complete shit. But I, I don't think it's as big of an issue as it was, you know, a year or two ago when certs were legitimately hard to come by. You know, it, it's pretty easy to gain certs. You gain, what, two or three just by capping a point now? Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's as big of an issue, but on the flip side, I don't really see a reason for removing it. I don't think any... I don't think anyone is going to be persuaded to buy a membership because they get you know, these extra certs per day that they would have been losing out on. <laughs> so I, I think it's kind of an unnecessary thing that's going to do more damage than good. Yeah. Well, if those 48 certs are your incentive, along with only 500 uh, station cash per month, it's kind of a really poor incentive. Like, you need more than that to be a member, I think, to make it, you know, really turn people's heads and get more memberships. Yeah, um, the fifty percent boost is also pretty, really pretty good when you think about it. When you get into more of a higher level, yeah, I'd have to agree. User in your channel timed out. Oh, uh, that came through. Hater died. Hater died. Hater died. Although I might keep that just because it lets everyone know when hater died, but uh, maybe not. Um, so. Rest in peace, hater. Rip. Rip in peace. Um, one... Oh, I totally blanked out on what I was going to say. Damn it, hater. Nope, lost it. All right. Well, um, is that all you guys had to say on the idea? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I guess... Uh, oh, I remember now. I'll just sort of mention it. It, um... I, I think there's been User just sort of your channel. talk power. Boom. He's returned from the dead. Okay. Zombie. Oh. Or Jesus. Zombie. Or, or Jesus. Zombie Jesus. All right. Um, I may do some editing magic there. But my last thing I wanted to mention was um, it. It's I think it's just part of a trend. Um pop size in the game is steadily shrinking. The number of servers up is going down. Uh, the number of available continents has gone down. Uh, advertisement has been increased. Uh, attachments for guns are now purchasable, which are direct upgrades are now purchasable with station cash. Fewer benefits for non-members, more benefits for members. It all goes towards, um, I think, that SOE is trying to make a certain amount of money from the game at any given time. And due to the decrease in population, it's not happening, so they're making shitty changes. I would say pay-to-win-ish, very small, but steadily in that direction, pay-to-win-ish changes to try to get what money they can. I don't know. Nothing's pay-to-win yet. Like, There's nothing you can buy that's overpowered. Everything is just either cosmetic and or you get it faster because you bought it. Well, I'm talking the um, the direct attachment upgrades that are purchasable with Station Cash in particular are actually pay-to-win. Yeah, but they're, 
Well, no, they're still just pay for convenience because you can still get them the normal way. And I mean, 30 certs, you, a member gets that every day. A non-member, you can make 30. I make 30 certs in like 15 minutes if I'm trying. Okay. Well, I mean, aren't the aren't like the max ammo capacity things? Yeah, I, I would argue that those are a little bit pure, not pay to win, but they're a lot more convenience purely because of how much they cost. Mm -hmm. Well, in any case, um, I guess I'm not arguing that it's gotten in a more pay to win direction, but just that it's getting more constricted as the game population is going down. Yeah, what? Is strange because I know I believe if I remember correctly, after the merges, like after all of the big merges and Hawson and things like that, the population actually started climbing again for a while until, you know, lag <laughs> and shitty servers and Arc Age came out. Well, uh, I don't know. Being on Connery, we used to be the largest server, and we used to have continents open to us at all times, and now we have two on prime time. Uh, and that's like well, one is full, full, and the other is kind of full. And then Briggs is non-existent. I'm beginning to wonder when the like wizards will merge with us. Yeah, they need to put the little dust bunnies rolling around on Indar and Briggs, <laughs> <laughs> which is really too bad. But uh, it's just the way it goes. I know the other servers that have recently merged are still very active, even with the hitching issues. Hmm. Mm. Hater, continue. I think if Hater were to talk right now, it would be Zoidberg robot. Not sure where I was going with that, but um, I can go ahead and transition. Actually, it's Slim's topic next, right? Yes, it is. All right. So what I've kind of been looking at is. In my opinion, one of the problems with balance right now for the air game and balancing everything is the fact that ESFs simply have too much air-to-ground potential on them. One of the issues that this makes is primarily when you're looking at balancing a Liberator. You know, pe people always talk about, you know, Liberators need to be primarily air-to-ground, they have too much air-to-air -air power, blah blah blah. The issue with that, though, is that if you make Liberators purely air-to-ground and make them good at it, and remove all the air to air, there's no reason to ever pull them because I can already, I would say that percentage wise, I'm a better Liberator pilot than I am an ESF pilot. And I can do a lot of things in an ESF survive situations more routinely than I could in a Liberator. About the only time that I think Liberators are really significantly more powerful than an ESF is killing something like a Sunderer where you need to have a little bit more staying power. And just the general fact of the ESF air-to-ground power is just too much and it makes it so much harder balancing everything instead of giving things a little more of a defined role. Uh -huh. That's kind of the general idea in poorly I'd worded wording. I'd have to agree to some extent. Um, I don't know how you go about removing an ESF's air-to-ground capability this far in the game, though, without causing... Oh, you don't. We're screwed at this point. But uh, if you want to create a finely crafted, you know, air meta, they should have been the interceptor all along, and they should have just been purely air-to-air. -air. And then you can, you can balance air-to-air -air missiles much more readily and all these other things that would have just, I think, gone over much better since you're only able to kill things with, you know, like a nose gun and you can tear libs apart and there's a yeah. necessity e for having things. Either that or at this point, the air-to-ground options need to actually limit your air-to-air -air options. Like right now, you can pull nose gun rocket pods and if you're a good ESF pilot, you're, like, you're fine for pretty much anything. Same thing with hornets, you don't really sacrifice much for anything. I did respectfully disagree with that. I agree with everything Royd said and that aspect, but it, um, it in order to do air-to-ground, um, you're actually sacrificing nearly all of your fuel tanks to do that, so you have to make sure that it, essentially the area has to be on lockdown. No one can come in. If an ESF comes in and ganks you while you're doing air-to-ground, you're probably going to die, even as an ace pilot. If you're running Hornets, uh, you're going to be out of afterburner tanks after you run away from the fight. You may already not have afterburner because it goes away so quickly. 
It just, um, there's a lot of things that can kill you, and it's generally only really, you're only going to be super successful when it's a fight that your faction's winning anyway. I I would disagree purely from my experience. Yeah, if you're fighting another equally skilled pilot, but if you're a good pilot, I in a 1v1, I barely ever even use burners once I get turned around and I'm looking at them. The only time I really like having that extra burners is fighting multiple opponents or fighting liberators. I mean, it, it's definitely a sacrifice, but you also gain a very large amount of power having them. I agree with that. They do. I, I, I don't agree with the idea that you're basically just as survivable with them, but I do think they, they are. It, I, I think it would be a perfect world if ESFs were the air-to-air -air interceptor, and for how versatile ESFs are, it's a bit ridiculous that they're able to do air-to-ground as well as mm -hmm. they are. I think it would be a cooler idea if you were to protect your bombers. Well, honestly, but, um, like, remove all their, their ground options on the ESFs. Sorry, ESF pilots. Um, then, you know, give the rocket pods and hornets to the Valkyrie. Straight move them over to the Valkyrie. Because the Valkyrie's armament system is pretty shitty. Mm -hmm. And I've toyed with it a bit, and it's, it's frustrating. It really is. And... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You, you can finish your thought. Uh, and then, you know, then you can buff libs back up to where they're powerful air to ground and they have a reason to pull something that's either not a shredder or a Dalton to go and gimp other air with. Yeah, I, I like, I don't think it's realistic that we can do that this far. In, I mean, you could do it this far into the game. I don't think that SOE has the balls or the reason to care to do it this far into the <laughs> game. But yeah, I. The the thing that gets me more than anything is the anti infantry nose guns. Like those are honestly, when you think about it, completely terrible. They should not have ever been in the game. I would be perfectly happy if they removed all of them right now, because they're terrible. Well, mm. they're terrible for everyone's ex well, not everyone's experience. Like anti infantry nose guns, at least the way they've tailored the. The air hammer has been interesting, I'll say. Like, it's a more AV, really close range AI weapon. Um, the Banshee is just pure bullshit. It's three bullets of splash damage that's utterly infuriating if you're playing infantry. And then there's the light PPA where you will die a slow and painful death as User an infantryman that everyone hates. Yeah, that that's pretty much what I don't like about them, especially the Banshee and even the air hammers, but it. ESFs are fast enough and maneuverable enough that once they decide to kill you, it just boop, dead. No it warning, no way to fight back, you're just wrecked instantly, and people don't like, you know, that's one of the reasons people hate so many in instant kill weapons. It's not fun to fight back against, because you can't. No, I completely agree in that sense. Um, but I think if we're talking about the future of Planetside 2 and it moving into the PS4 and it being a successful platform and stuff, they need to start thinking about how they can properly change the air meta to be you know, something more useful and friendlier and clear defined roles for aircraft. Yeah, I'm and not sure if just nerf Hornets is the answer to this. Because using Hornets as is, going back to like Going back to when we were talking about Hornets and Rocket Pods is fucking hard. <laughs> and, oh my god, it's so hard. And if it were any less damage, it would just not be a factor. But a complete rework where ESFs are functioning as interceptors and protecting libs would be beneficial, I think. Um, the anti-infantry nose guns, it's really hard for me to say anything either way because I've actually only... I've never used the Banshee or the PPA before. Um, and I've never actually, I don't think, died to them as infantry either. But I, it I... seems off to me to I guess in the current state make ESFs completely not able to tackle infantry at all especially since like Dalton and Shredder Libs already can't tackle infantry at all I'm kind of alright with ESFs not. I would rather see ESFs not really be able to tackle infantry and see infantry have a lot harder of a time taking down an ESF than it is right now so Libs yeah. are sort of the vector there yeah Libs are Libs are your, you know, if we're breaking things down into base level infantry, middle level air, and high level air, and I don't mean high level skill wise, I mean altitude wise, you've basically got your liberators running low to middle, 
your infantry on low and your ESFs running high to low, and then you've kind of broken down the air game and you've in you've introduced a lot more of a meta to the air game other mm -hmm. than the fact that a good ESF pilot can counter anything and everything with their ESF 100% of the time. Well, I think the same goes for uh, a, like your top-notch uh, lib crews, because they can pretty yeah. much counter anything they really want to. If you have a 303 uh, liberator crew that's been running with them, with each other for, User you know, like... Your channel timed out one to two years, like, there's few things that can take that down bar an air squad. It's frightening. Yeah, I would I would say a top-notch lib crew set up three of three needs. Like, one very, very good ESF pilot could probably kill them most of the time, and two could take them out all the time. But if you've got average pilots, you probably need three to four to guarantee a kill unless they're flying like complete bitches. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, the TLDR, again. I'd, I'd yeah. like to see a little bit more broken down. ESFs need to be, if nothing else, brought encouraged to have more of an air-to-air -air role, and Liberators mm -hmm. should be able to do a little bit more air-to-ground. Like, Liberators are honestly pretty weak air-to-ground right now, if you look at any type of resistance. Like, sure, if you get into that fight with no AA, you can bomb the shit out of them, but if you get any resistance, Liberators really don't have a whole lot of strike power. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. If you're prepared for it, there's it just insta gibbed. Yeah. yeah. Uh I it it really does need to be a rework, which probably won't happen, but I mean I there's no there's no band aid fix or numbers change that will make everything it... <laughs> make everything okay. It needs to happen. If they're going to launch this on PS4, and if you're talking about you know your game being successful and this facet of your game being healthy and people wanting to play that on a, on the console, and for future PC, the growth, I think you just need to bury the hatchet and do it. I don't... I, like, I 100% I agree it needs to happen, but I don't think it ever will. I don't think I've ever really seen SOE make an air decision that was based on an actual understanding of how the air game and planet side and how things interact with each other like they've shown so many times that they don't understand it which i get like obviously if you're a developer you're not playing the game as much as some of us that you know should probably be doing other things with our lives occasionally but it's still i've i'm kind of losing faith in their decisions on the air game and their constant ignoring of all of the complaints and bugs that plague it all the time since beta Beta side. Anyways, I think we'll beat this topic to death. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of our topics go back to someone in SOE needs to learn to fly. Or they need to set up connections and listen to pilots and take their opinions into account and understand what's going on because they really, they've shown repeatedly that they don't. It would be hey nice guys, we're going to give open form. Go ahead. We're, we're going to give Liberators composite armor that takes five tank shells every pilot. Guys, that might not be a good idea. No, 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 it'll be fine. We're going to do it. It'll be part of the Liberator update. <laughs> I'm still really pissed about that. I keep telling C-Swick, you do not want a Galaxy update. Trust me. <laughs> it will not end well for you. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, none of them. <laughs> I think we can. Oh my God, I think we can safely move into your topics, Ginger. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm covering the emails again. Uh, we had two emails we want to talk about. One we will discuss in depth, and the other we will summarize purely because we've sort of mentioned some of the main points before, and we will try to focus on the stuff that we haven't talked about. So the first one, uh, give me a second, as usual, to pull it up. All right, this one's from Newit Flying. He is an NC pilot who is not actually Newit Flying. Here it is. Hey, love your show. I watched it from the start, including that weird section. No wow, I butchered that sentence. Hey, love your show. I watched it from the start, including that weird sex noise one, which I try to repress every day. Anyways, my questions. One, do you think afterburner pods need a buff? With A to A the way it is, do you feel that the afterburner pods are underperforming? It's very uncommon that you can run from an air-to-air -air lock on 
uh, as a, any ESF with full afterburner tanks without running racer frame or if there's no cover nearby? Or should secondary slot users take a nerf on their default afterburners? Um, so my, I'll, I'll break this one down before we move on, continue into the email. I think if uh, afterburner pods were to be buffed to the extent that they would be as good as Tomcats are, the mobility would just be ridiculous. Uh, it would be insane, because uh, Tomcats are insane. And so I, I think the correct response to the game at the moment is to nerf Tomcats rather than buff Afterburners. But one thing I think do needs to, does need to happen with Afterburners is what uh, Hater said from User the start. Your channel. Hi, Hater. Is what Hater said from the start when the um, cert line came out during the ESF update is that Afterburners need a decision-making cert line. It should be a choice of either total fuel capacity or fuel regeneration that you're certing out. And um, buffing that so you spec into one or the other, depending on whether you want your afterrunner to get you out of sticky situations or whether you want to consistently have it during an extended dogfight, I think that is should be what matters. Um, but in terms of just buffing them up to the extent that Tomcats are, I don't think that would be a very good idea. What do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. I think, especially from a lib perspective, I've actually thought about this too, and at first you're like, yeah, that seems like a reasonable idea. But one of the things that you don't think about, or many people don't think about, AB pods are the reason that ESFs can take down Liberators so easily a lot of the time. You know, you can just get into that hover, burn around, turn around. And one of the biggest things when you're trying to fight an ESF as a Liberator is that you're trying to force them to burn up their pods so they don't have any fuel. And that's when you can usually kill them. And I basically agree with what Ginger said, is that if you buff them to the point of Tomcats, they will gain an absurd amount of mobility and just it it'll be terrifying to try to fight because they'll be burning all over an entire hex without ever running out mm -hmm. as much fun as that'd be that'd be yeah that'd be broken kind of reminds you of the bug where you could infinitely afterburner the jar code figured out and they patched immediately <laughs> that was that wasn't even useful though like flying around in the mag rider at 120 the mag's just killing itself on every piece of terrain like you're losing 25 percent health like every time you hit a rock and i'm just like why do you do this jarko he's like it's fucking awesome it was a good transport mag rider way though like it if was. you were on ozamir i just remember harassers shitting their pants when they see a mag rider just burn like way faster than them down the road and they're like a click ahead within 30 seconds <laughs> All right. Fuck, I wish I'd been playing during that bug. Oh my god. Almost as good as Invisible Galaxies. Uh. <laughs> From nowhere, the whale. All right. So, part two of the email is he's asking for rushing help. Uh, he says, I would consider myself a pretty good pilot, and to rush... Uh, well, I misread that. And lately, I've been trying to improve my flying style by learning how to rush. But I always find I put myself on the back foot and defensive. If my opponent is smart, they usually gain distance and pick at me from afar. I don't have too much trouble closing the distance, but I do have trouble sticking to them and providing constant pressure once I do. Please help, our guitar. Uh, <laughs> so, so I'm a habitual rusher. Like one of the few sites I know, and it freaks everybody out, so... My biggest tip is when a guy afterburns away from you, he usually does in a direction, and most ESF pilots, as a response, will reverse in the opposite direction, mirroring him. Now, this may sound counterintuitive, but I want you to reverse maneuver towards into him, so into his side. If he's reverse maneuvering uh, what appears to be his right-hand side, don't do your right-hand side. Do your left-hand side and under. So what this will, it'll give you a massive speed boost, and then it will force you out of hover, and it will throw you towards him. Hmm. And then what I try to do is I aim for their tail, and I either try and get up and below them and behind them, forcing them to turn, and then you basically turn it into like a circular motion in which he's going to be forced to either run away or turn and fight you at nose-to-nose -nose range. So you basically just reverse thrust straight at them and try to end so that you finish the thrust behind them so they have to turn? Basically. That's an interesting idea. That would 
fuck up your fuel tanks. You wouldn't be able to do that all the time. But I think I've no. tried that before to good success. You have to time it um, when you're rushing. The entire thing is based around reacting to your opponent. Like You can't initiate the burn because then they have more fuel in which to counter your burn with. So you have to in turn force them into a burn which will you then can respond because you have initiative and the fuel in which to react to said burn. The other relevant thing to point out is that if you're rushing, you shouldn't be in hover mode very often, whereas your opponent will, which means every time they burn and you burn, they're burning up a little more fuel than you. So I, I sometimes, like, you know, you find halfway through the fight, suddenly they're out of fuel and you've still got half a tank left because they're not getting that big hit that you get when you initiate it in hover mode. Mm -hmm. Though it is difficult to just directly charge people that are playing defensively. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever tried charging a Vortec Reaver? Don't do it. <laughs> I have. It's fun. I like doing it. It's not what they know how to aim. The rope environment. Good try, hater. Robot. Robo hater. Bebopo. All right, we'll we'll ignore hater. And move on to part three. The email. Sorry, hater. Uh, will you ever consider live streaming UTR? Oh shit, this was the tricky one. <laughs> uh, I know haters' internet is shit, but it could be a good venue for discussion. Exhibit um, A. We will consider it. And my last question for how the air game is current is currently is auto relic to blame. The answer is yes. Thank you for answering all my questions from your favorite ESF pilots, New at Flying. Yay! Woohoo! All right, thank um, you, New at Flying. Um, uh, as pertaining to the live streaming thing, we've uh, toyed with the idea, but we want the the game to be in a state where we're enjoying it, and you don't hear us, you know, raging over Twitch over stupid things. I thought he just meant live streaming the podcast audio. Rather than us playing the game. Oh, sorry, I took that as a completely different way. Never mind. We could potentially do that. We'll think about it. Um, so the next email. So uh, this email is from Clintimus. Uh, he's a CSTB, I think is his outfit, and he's the air lead in that outfit in the NC. Um, happen to know him, and he started out the email with, hello, all the cool guys from UTR and Ginger. Thank you, Clintimus. Um, as punishment for being rude to me, I'm now going to take your email and summarize because it's huge. So, uh, we're going to talk, go sort of, blah, 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 blah. we're going to go through each point and sort of summarize it, uh, each part of the email, and then, um, talk about that little tidbit individually and sort of give our thoughts and then move on to the next one. Um, so... His first bit is, uh, now I hate the air-to-air -air lock on missiles as much as the next guy, and I don't even think coyotes belong in this game, but I do think there is a different perspective that we should all try to make a note of as ace pilots. They're in the game, so let's deal with it. And then he goes on to sort of uh, flesh out that argument. You know, we can all cry out, moan, and bitch to SOE about them, and maybe, just maybe, they'll listen to us, but we have to remember that SOE is a business, and they want to stay in business, and they listen to the majority, which is not air. Um, that is a fair point, and I think that is what is actually happening. Uh, pilots aren't... Uh, there's no way for SOE to directly communicate with pilots. There's no one on SOE who's flying, and the pilot community's voice is not large enough to reach them on any issue whatsoever, which is why we have the shitty air game that we do have. Um, dealing with the shitty game is sort of what has brought us to this point. Um, most of the pilots that I knew a year ago, I'd say 99% of them have now left the game. I am no longer really playing the game right now because I, I really can't because of uh, air squads and V4S. Um, I think, honestly, dealing with the current situation is just going to result in fewer people playing. Um, and so there's no real... Nothing, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is nothing's really going to come of that. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. Deal with it is really stupid. Um, no offense to Aww. him, but I mean, not not stupid, but it, it won't accomplish anything. You know, when NC stat maxes were horrifically OP, 
you could have just said, well, deal with it. It's in, the, you know, you can make that argument for anything. Well, just deal with it. It's in the game like that. But nothing it doesn't make it right. Just deal with everything. Yeah. If something's broken and you believe it is, you should probably tell people that, not just roll <laughs> over and deal with it. I will say really quick, uh, in defense of Quintimus, that this was him playing devil's advocate. Um, he he does not actually think this, uh, is the impression that I got from the email. And he goes on to say some other things uh, against lock-ons, which I'll read really quick. Uh, the issue isn't the lock-ons themselves, but rather that experienced pilots also have the ability to use this crutch. And they use it to hit you hard right between the legs, and that's the issue here. Uh We've, we've sort of touched on this before, which is why I'm going through it quickly, and I've, I actually mentioned this in Season 1, that Tomcats aren't a crutch, they're just overpowered, so when a new uses it, it appears to be a crutch, but people who play the game religiously and are really good pilots can use it to get the same boost and be fucking unbeatable. It's just that most of them don't because it's really cheesy and douchey. Um, anyway, going through that really quickly, just because we've said it before. Um, and then he sort of, uh, let's see, he goes on to, um, mention V4S, which is the air squad that I've, I've mentioned before. And he says, uh, the reason that they always have the upper hand is that they are willing to use lock-ons unlike most aces who, for whatever reason, don't. For me, lock-ons make it too easy in most situations. The only time I pull them if it's, is if it's me against a large air force of ESFs and I'm outnumbered. I think I only have the bronze medal. Uh, I think there is a time and place for them. I don't think they should be used in large forces, though. So what do you guys think about the whole thing? Should we ace pilots be willing to use lock-ons for the right situations? Um, I think that... It's not... Uh, against a large number of pilots, you know, it's not going to get you anywhere. There's still... It's going to be four lock-ons against you or one lock-on. Um, even if it is blatantly OP and it'll probably let you kill one of them. It, it, it won't be a huge help. I think if eights pilots were all willing to pull lock-ons in the right situations, then the air game would be in a much shittier state, um, which is hard to believe, but would, would be the case. And individual pilots would be, or, or just all pilots would be a lot more OP because lock-ons are OP. So if more people were pulling them, then everyone would be more OP. And it wouldn't be fun. You guys have anything to say? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, yeah, pretty much agree with that. I mean, I've I've pulled them every once in a while, like when there's a giant group and I'm going up against a lot. I don't really like doing it, but occasionally I get pissed off when I run into like a big gank squad and I get three or four people and we all pull them and just go wipe them. And then, honestly, I usually just go back to warp gate, jump out, and pull any SF without them. Hmm. I'll do it. Just getting more people too is helpful as well. Yeah, I think that's the biggest issue with the air game that I, I don't want to get off track really, so I'll make this really short, is that you can't have a tailored experience in planet side because people can pull as many things as they want. So there's no way to balance weapons around numbers because they could be used by one person or a hundred. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I will move on. Thank you, Clintimus, for the email. Um, and let's transition to Ironroids' this topic. Is Ironroids back? Oh, Ironroids left. He BRB'd. Right. Now we're missing Roids Ro and Hater. Hater? Oh. The robot. Yep, robot. Okay. Robot! robot. Oh. I'm here, but I mean, everything's yep. robot. You're good. Nope, you're good. You're actually good. You're not robot. Oh, really? Really, I think. Wycliffe is your robot. I did not hear any robot. Oh. Let's see uh, if it lasts. It won't. Did you want to really quick? Uh, did you have anything that you weren't able to say about your topic, hater, that you want to mention? Not about my topic, no. Okay. Well, Roids, uh, take it away. Okie dokie. Um, so we actually touched on uh, it a bit earlier, but uh, my topic is uh, a meta game for air. It's got a great big question mark on it because, as far as meta game for air right now, it's kind of what you make of it. And uh, 
I don't know, it leaves a lot of people directionless. It leaves ground guys wondering what the hell you're doing here. I don't know. And it's a lot of it just creates a really unhealthy relationship between the air and the ground because neither side really knows what air is here for to do. <laughs> Wycliff just put in the chat said we be here for the farm and uh, <laughs> farm 2014. Yeah, those one to twelve fights, man. Got to farm them. Time for those dom domination streaks. Oh yeah. Lol. It only takes two now. <laughs> it only takes two for a domination now. What? It used to be yeah. five. It used to yeah, be like a hard it thing to do. They knocked it down to three like a month or two ago. I couldn't figure out why I was getting so damn many dominations, and now it's two. So yeah, you kill the same person twice in a row, and apparently you're dominating them. Bend over. I don't think I agree with that, but you know. It, uh, yeah, it's completely dumb. I should check my board, because there's like been plenty of guys that you know, killed while medic reses him like three or four in the line of fire. Oh yeah, you're gonna get like 20 or 30 a day if you play for a couple of hours. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so silly. Anyways, um, oh, we also talked about like the hierarchy. You know, like ESS up high, they can uh, they're basically your you know your eagles, your kind of carrion birds. They can clean up any other air, except they shouldn't be able to directly affect anything that's you know alive on the ground, which I would agree with. Um. And then uh, libs need to be, you know, buffed to where they can have uh, an air-to-ground presence, but not to the point where they're so tanky. You know, you can take, you know, five, six tank shells, which is ridiculous. Then uh, it starts creating like a checks and balances system, where there are clear counters because one thing is designed to counter this, and like just basic simple rock paper scissors, which isn't in the current air game right now because they have given your two main vehicles, your ESF, your lib, so much utility that depending on what you want to do with it, you can kind of go and do whatever with it. Depending on how you've trained up and how you've experienced it. And uh, this creates a lot of tension between um, the air and the ground and we see it a lot on Reddit where like, um, I think a lot of ground people could give a fuck what happens about air, quite honestly. Like, they, they honestly don't give a shit. That's a hugely unhealthy part of your game that's ruining both players' experiences because you're having weapons that are catered to people that don't fly that are too powerful in the hands of people who do fly, <laughs> along with um, your air to, air to ground potential is not there anymore. So, if you want to fly, all you're doing mainly is air to air. So if we reestablish some form of pecking order through operations in the air game, which, you know, like this is supposed to counter this, um, you readjust rotary so with your standards starting those guns, and so on and so forth, you start to create your checks and balances system where air isn't just solely there to either farm each other or the ground, where it's actually there to push objectives is a place I'd like it to be. Uh, I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts on that? I'd love for that to be the case. Like I, like too. we covered earlier, I I don't realistically seeing it ever happening, which is kind of sad, but I think the game would be a lot better off with it. I think to an extent the Liberator utility was kind of jacked into the game by players, purely because they were originally so bad with the tail gun. But yeah, they definitely have a lot of air-to-air -air potential now, which is... I like it, and it's fun, and I love doing it, but I can see, I can understand why it's not great for the game. I, I just agree on what you say about a lot of the guns being catered to people who don't fly and being insane in the hands of people who do. Um, come to think, the only um, change I can think of that uh, really did cater to uh, the flying community was the accidental discovery of the reverse maneuver and hovering, which is funny because the only thing that actually positively contributed to the air game was an accident, and they still haven't figured it out. And then they tried to stamp it out a while ago. Yeah. And then the pilots freaked out. 
Yeah, I, it is kind of funny that like the biggest things in the air game were basically kind of like with the Liberator Daltoning ESFs. That was a hundred percent not intended, but it added a ton to the air game for a long time. You could argue about it, yes or no, now, but same thing with the reverse maneuver, unintended things that. That's the problem I have is that instead of embracing it, SOE has tried to kind of not with the reverse maneuver. Yeah, they've kind of tried to sweep it under the rug and ignore it. But we're also thinking about on... nerfing the Dalton velocity and stuff too for a while with the lib update. Yeah. That, was, that was a legitimate fear, which is. Uh... Now, also along with that, um, I think in order to create a really healthy air game, you need the resource system fully implemented because then there are ants in the game. And for those of you that don't know, ants are what will be fueling your bases with nanites so you can gain resources to keep fighting, keep throwing grenades, you know, keep shooting bullets, essentially, on your base. And this is so you can repair your turrets. If you're out of, you know, nanites, at least in PS1, your turrets wouldn't regenerate. You would gain no resources. So you were just running on your bare bones basic what an engineer can give you. Um, what that gives the air game to do, like, can you imagine, you know, strike missions and air squads trying to protect an ant, trying to get to the front line to, you know, supply all these people in a tower while an enemy air squad tries to take this out or something? Like, I think that'd be just absolutely awesome. In general, I think uh, frontline objectives and the ability to fulfill them without getting shot down by anti-air is where the ESF meta direction needs to go. I would, yeah, I agree to an extent. I really agree on the ant thing. Is that air isn't really good at that front line, front line slugging it out purely because of how quickly AA count uh, scales and can take it out, which you can argue backwards and forwards on whether that's good or not, but. Air really does need objectives. Air is kind of like your medieval cavalry. You kind of need to hit around the flanks, hit and run, and having ants and things to protect or little side objectives would be great to give air something to actually do other than, like you guys mentioned, farm air or farm ground. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like that uh, medieval cavalry analogy because you like if you're going in to air into a frontline assault, generally you're going to get slaughtered because everyone's set up. But you can take out that one specific thing. Or if you let the battle sets in, sort of thing, you can go in for that decisive flank with your air. Those are the kinds of things you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Haters, like haters hater. says horses hate spears, planes hate sky cards. <laughs> Essentially, that's, that's it. It's anyway. actually a pretty good analogy, because if you get your cavalry behind and hit the back of a sky guard plane spear thing... Yeah. Dude, some of those spears, like, 24 feet long. How do you turn that thing around in time? You don't. Like, you just point it forward. <laughs> I hear rumbling behind us, guys. <laughs> Shit. Okay, I'm ready. Or can you just, like, grab it and flip, like, just lift it up, flip it over, and face the other way? Just do, like, a 180 about turn? That'd be pretty like, awesome. Like the Total War games? Yeah. Just instant response. <laughs> Fuck you, Calvary. Yeah, they're, they're not that instant, but yeah. Yeah. I like Total War. Alright, game. Getting back on topic. Is it, um, is that. Uh, got that's to that's, that's all I have to say. Uh, Air needs some objectives, um, along with my, you know, month, weekly plug of better base design. So there's phases of a base where air armor can play, and then it turns into the infantry battle for the last bit. Now we're just going to nerf spawn kill XP so that you let them come out of it, <laughs> instead of fixing the broken design. Uh, Dude, by, the, by the time this game is over, the tower is just going to be one giant spawn room shield. You have to hold <laughs> on to the two points outside the tower. Oh my god. It's just going to be this bubble. Oh. I'm going to actually, you just reminded me of my weekly plug for the emails, which I didn't actually do when I was discussing emails. This is going to be a little bit of a throwback to 10 minutes ago, but 
Uh, email us, utrpodcast at gmail.com, with discussion ideas, and we will talk about them and mention them on the podcast and make them our topics, and we will discuss them, and as you saw with the previous emails, we will even be critical of them. But um, we still love you, if even, even if we're critical of your idea, uh, and we appreciate the emails, and... Um, even a bad idea helps promote good ideas. Not that any of the emails today were bad ideas. It just, just, I don't even know where I'm going with this. But yeah, email us and we'll talk about your topic and it'll be cool. And um, utrpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you. And um, anyway, continue. I think story time. Okay, story, story time. time. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Uh, I... Okay, well, that okay. solves that. I have a good story. Um, so... I have two dogs. I have a pug named Tug. Tug the pug. <laughs> and I have a Western Highland Terrier named Ellie. Uh, she's like, you know, all white. And Western Highland Terriers are smaller dogs. If you don't know what one is, look at look up a picture because what they look like is sort of relevant. Um, so I get out of um, I get out of bed in the morning and I'm sort of in the kitchen doing my thing and I hear my mom talking to my stepbrother. Uh, my stepbrother's like, "Oh my God, what happened to her leg?" I was referring to my uh, Westie, as they're called, Western Highland Terrier, Ellie. Um, and my mom's like, no, it's okay. She just got into the bark. That That's not a big deal. She, I guess, didn't really get a good look at it. And that's all I heard of that conversation. I didn't actually see her leg. I was like, okay. And then, you know, the day goes by and we're sitting at dinner. And I think something had happened by this point. They'd both gotten a closer look at her. And my mom was like, yeah, I think we probably need to take her... Need, need to look at her leg. I think something might be wrong. Um, we may need to take her to the vet. And I'm like, what? And I look outside, and there's just this, like, dark blood red stain on her entire, like, blood all over her leg. And I'm like, holy sh- no, we need to, I'd, like, put my dinner down and go outside and grab her and put her into the bathtub. And uh, I st- ask my stepbrother to get me medical tape and neosporin and I start trying to wash the blood out of her fur and it's not coming out timed out um I did like I'm I have a pitcher and I'm using the bath water to pour it over her leg and there's like no red stuff even going on to the going on to the uh floor of the bathtub there's nothing there I'm like okay and um at that point I try to like cautiously poke into her fur to see where the where the like cut is and it looks like it could seriously be really deep and I'm holding her um under the belly with one hand and I can actually feel her heart rate and then I'm like nosing into her fur with the other and her heart rate isn't actually going up and she's not reacting to pain at all from me nosing into her fur and I'm looking and trying to find this cut and I can't find it and no matter where I look on her leg there is no part of the root of her hair that's soaked anywhere and I'm like what the fuck is going like it's clearly like blood everywhere but no and I'm like "I I don't understand what's going on there's nothing she's fine like and and my stepbrother had thought she was limping, but she just sort of has a hobbly walk. She was actually not even limping. I'm like, what what happened? And um, I uh, figure it out. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I User your go channel. and talk to my mom, and my brother had been going to a, a, a convention over the weekend, and he had a steampunk cosplay. And he attempted to dye his hair red, and he put he he failed, <laughs> but he put the um hair dye in the garbage in the bathroom. Ellie got into the it, it was red hair dye. She got into the garbage and got red hair dye on her leg. That was all it was, and it like you have to it seriously looks like she like severed an artery. It, it's all over her leg and like blood red hair, and it's a week later now. It's still there. <laughs> It's hair dye. It doesn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been taking her out on walks. Like your dog's like, no, she's it's 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 red hair dye. She's fine. Hater brings up a valid point. Hater says, "Here's my story time story." Scumbag Air Force, U.S. Air Force, first in air, space, and cyberspace. Let's use Army Internet. Poor hater. GG. GG! 
the Strugs on this episode. We haven't had this DC of this magnitude before. Fortunately, we okay. have Black Lives so there's, so there's still three it's of the us. The so, Illuminati. The Illuminati. Illuminati. Noodle. Minadle. Exactly. Okay. What he said. Um, so my story is about uh, a buddy artist friend I have. <laughs> he uh, he got really into arm wrestling after high school. Super duper into arm wrestling. He'd go to these arm wrestling competitions like every other week, wherever they'd be. Or he'd just arm wrestle people in the bar when he was drunk enough and just really stupid things. But anyways, he's in this arm wrestling competition. And uh, he gets his arm bent back too fast, and he torqued, he like mispositioned his elbow to try and get leverage. He rips his tendon in his one arm. Hmm. So his right arm just rips the tendon right off hmm. and just <laughs> pumps his elbow like the arm doesn't work. Hmm. And so it was the hmm. best of three, and he's like, he's like, well, shit, I guess I got to use my other arm. So he does, rips the tendon in the other arm, oh. and we now, and he's had surgery, his elbows now work again, but we refer to him as the champion of all arm wrestling. What the fuck? I mean, props to him, like, one arm goes out and he's just like, fuck it, I got a left arm. <laughs> Wait, how does that actually work? Like, if he's arm wrestling someone that's right-handed, or do they, they have like a right-handed wrestling? Do they, do they have a right-handed league and a left-handed league? <laughs> no, I think you're expected to know how to use both hands. Oh, ladies, both arms, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that great guy. You know, got shit elbows now. God. Moral of the story, don't take up competitive arm wrestling. <laughs> Which I can't even say without laughing. Dude, Stallone did a movie about it. It's legit. Seriously? Yeah, I remember that. I want to know what that picture's like. Like, going into the director's office, like, so what do you want to pitch a movie about? Arm wrestling. <laughs> Guy's like, no. brilliant, it's never been done before. I'm so For obvious long. reasons. I do things I want, you know? Like, I had this boxing movie, no one wants to support it. It turns out to be a hit. Let's do arm wrestling next. Let's see how far we can go. Alright. Elbow 4, the re arm wrestling. <laughs> By Hater again. Okay. Uh, Wycliffe? Yeah. Should I tell my great story? Do it. Yes. All right, so this happened a couple months ago. Can promise you 100% true, right? So I went over to New York to visit some family, and my family lives over by the Catskills, right? Pretty cool mountains. If you've ever read, uh, what like what's the game? Um, my side of the mountain, I think. Is that the book where he goes over there? I hate her. I think it is. I don't know, but over there. So we go out on a family vacation out to the Catskill Mountains to just go do vacation-y things. I don't know what you do. Anyway, it was like the third night that I... I think it was the third night that we were out there. And I got bored, woke up at like 1 in the morning, and I was really hungry. But I was on a diet at the time, so I wasn't supposed to be eating food at 3 in the morning or whatever time it was. What time did I say it was? 1? I don't one. know. 1. It was 1. All right. So I go out. I grab my spork and my pudding, and I go out to go sneak a little snack, snack pack by the way, obviously, in the woods. And I'm eating my snack pack with my spork, and then I hear like rustling going around in the brush. I'm like, well that, that can't be healthy, but I don't know, I was pretty into my pudding, so just kept on eating it. And then, like, little weird growling noises. I, I don't know, it was weird. It was a long time ago when I was freaked out. So I go over to look, and there was, like, a little cat in the bushes that looked like something was wrong with it. So I pick it up, and I'm walking it back. It had, it, its leg was all cut up. I don't know, it was weird. 
it was kind of freaking out, but I'm trying to take care of it. And then a bear comes running out of the other side of the clearing at the cat. I was probably trying to kill the cat. So I threw the cat at it because I don't want to get killed by a bear. And I went up and I start climbing up a tree, right? And the bear's below it, but it was a black bear. And I don't really know how to end this. I thought I was going to be able to come up with something better. I jumped out of the tree and stabbed it in the neck with a spork and killed it. And that was the end of my story. <laughs> I, I, like, originally I was planning on coming up with a better way to kill it that sounded believable. But I don't know how you make a believable story about killing a bear with a spork. I feel like I was given an impossible challenge. <laughs> what if you, like, fashioned it to, like, a stick or something so it could go, I'd... like, deep enough? I mean, I was thinking about that, but where do I find the time? Like, was I prepping the spork for in case of bear attack? I have a solution. I... Okay, so you're, you're in the tree. You're in the branch of the tree. And what you All do right. is you put the... Uh, the handle of the spork between your middle finger and your ring finger so that the sharp end of the spork is sticking out from from your fist you do that with your right fist. towards bears right make sure you don't break your elbow in the process but what you do is you jump out of the tree and when you're halfway down you yell falco and then once you get to the bottom and to the bear you yell punch and punch, the punch bear it in the, in the eye and knock I like out it. of the clearing i'd like to uh, append my previous story <laughs> See, I, I have a completely different premise. Like, your grandpa comes with you, and then uh, the bear attacks your camp all of a sudden. Your grandpa uses a cane to walk around in the mountains, which sounds completely retarded. But anyways, then your grandpa on his last or a crutch. gives you the... Yeah, this cane or this crutch gives it to you. <laughs> and you tape your glorious spark to it, and then you get vengeance for your dead grandfather. The grandfather's name? Albert Einstein. No, Falco. Yeah, what if his first name was He's Last and, and the fa what, his first name was Falco and our family name is Punch? So like it would have been like this is for that, and then you scream Falco Punch. <laughs> Kill the bear with the sport. Oh cane. god, there's two haters. Oh god, the robot is replicating. Shut it down. Team Speak like Audio Jurassic has Park. fucked this podcast so hard. <laughs> Three spooky. User in your channel time. There down. it is again. Hater one. Wait, false you prophet turn hater. Off the notifications? No. God. Well, <laughs> uh, the first one happened, and I was like, okay, that's uh, that's a small little. Th I didn't expect hater to keep trying to rejoin throughout the entire fucking podcast. And we talked over it too, so I can't I can't cut that. So well, that's everyone just be will a know thing. when hater cuts off and goes in and comes. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's like 10 of those. There are 20, probably. Well, ladies Sorry, and do you gentlemen. have them like really loud? No. We'll, we'll find out when <laughs> this goes live. <laughs> Apologies. Oh I apologize on behalf of Hater. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. For sticking with us, Mom. We just went robot there. All right, thank you, we have uh, breaking news. for coming on today. By the way, your story was oh, incredible, and time. your ESF you. crap was decent too. I guess. Oh, thank you. I, I worked more on the story than the ESF crap. <laughs> just kidding. It was amazing. Everything was amazing. Um, oh, really quick. Uh, you do a. You're on hiatus right now for a flight school that you do on PTS, and you wanted to um, mention that there's Shame a website plug. For Yes, I will shamelessly plug that. Uh, kind of on hiatus right now, I've been more involved with Server Smash, and I've had actual things going on in real life, which has really been annoyingly taking away from my doing unproductive gaming things. But either way, I have been running a flight school on PTS. We have a different theme pretty much every week. We usually do it on Saturdays. I'll probably be starting it up after Server Smash ends, and I think about a month is when the final match is. But either way, I am running a website, which you can go to. It's an engine site, ps2flightschool.engine.com. You can register there. We've got forums set up. There's a lot of really skilled pilots on there. So if you want practice, if you want to try to network with other pilots on your server to form terrible, terrible gang squads and kill the air game, you can do that. So 
yeah, that's kind of all on that. Again, ps2flightschool.engine.com. You could go register there for good things to happen. All right. And with that, email us, utrpodcast.gmail.com. And remember to keep it under the radar. <laughs> that that was like legitimate. I spent the last half of that trying to frantically stall to figure out how I was going to kill a bear with a spork. <laughs> it's like, oh god, I was okay up until here. You should have gone into some like serious. I moved in and dodged his haymaker and got two hit spork hits into his back and then. Oh uh, my god. The third hit was a chain combo, so I got critical three times damage. Which proc my special move. <laughs> spork three, the re-sporkening. <laughs> hey, I love your show and I have watched it from the start, including that weird sex noise one which I repress every day. <laughs> It's only six noises because it was my sex noises. <laughs> oh my god. That weird sex noise one. Holy cow. I don't know how to feel about that. I feel like that's a drunken memory I should repress, but I can't because it actually wasn't a drunken memory. 